going on guys, Nick Carter here back with another tutorial in DaVinci Resolve and woohoo, am I keen to get this one to you. Obviously Stranger Things Season 3 has just been released and I absolutely love that show, the aesthetic, the soundtrack, the whole thing is incredible and one of the things I've always liked about it was the intro scene and so the other night, you know, I was keen on the show, I was watching a few videos and I was like, I wonder if I can do that title in uh, Fusion in DaVinci Resolve. And so I started dabbling around and as you can see at the start of this video, I feel like I managed to get a pretty similar effect. And that's what we're going to be doing in this video. Now, full disclosure, you're gonna need to know a bit about Fusion. This is probably not for beginners. So maybe check out some of my other videos. There's a few playlists there. Uh, Fusion Basics, What are Nodes, all that sort of stuff. Get that under your belt first and then jump into this. So taking a look at the node tree here, you can see we do have, don't have too much going on, right? We've got one text layer with a couple of effects on top, a couple of masks here to control some of the animations that we have at the end here. And then the rest of it, and the hardest part really, is just the animating of the text because we're doing it in probably not the most conventional way, but it still creates the effect none the less. So let's just get into it. So start a new project in DaVinci Resolve, head on over to the Fusion tab and let's create a new Fusion composition. And we're going to just call this title effect, call it whatever you want. Look, in terms of duration, the actual title sequence, if we head on over to Safari, goes for 53 seconds. For the sake of this video, just so that we don't make it too long, we're just going to make it 20 seconds. Uh, but you know, because it's quite a slow title sequence, you know, making it a minute if you want, you just need to extend some of the animations. And we'll leave the frame rate at 24 frames and we're just going to go create. And then we're just gonna double click on that to open it down below. All right, so we're gonna close the media pull up. Now for the majority of this effect, we can just have one viewer open up the top here. You can do this by clicking this button here. So two viewers, one viewer. What we're gonna do first is create a background node. So you can do that by dragging just a background down here. I'm gonna leave it blank or black and drag it there. And the next, we're going to create a text node. So shift space, text plus, and hit enter. We're just gonna merge that down on the background node, dragging that to the output, creates our merge. And we're gonna call this Stranger Things. Now. The whole title is in capitals, so we're gonna go Stranger Space Things. And we're gonna need a font, a very specific font to create this effect. So all you're gonna to wanna to do is open your internet browser, head on over to Google, and literally just type in Stranger Things font. And the one I downloaded was from the top. Click on that link. Download it and put it in your font folder so you can access it in DaVinci Resolve and then once you have You can find it here. So there you go. There is the font. So we're going to uh, increase the size a little bit just so we know what we're starting with Nice and we're going to just change some of the tracking So we're going to bring them a little bit closer together and we're also going to bring the spacing in a little bit closer as well If you have a look here, let's open up Quickly, Stranger Things logo or title. So obviously this is the effect we're trying to achieve. So we can see that the spacing is there. So that's what we're going to leave. So back to there. So that's that's pretty good so far. So we need to do a few things first. Number one is we want to make the S and the R bigger than they already are. Because if we have a look at the logo, they are. So to do that, we're going to right click in the text field here and go character level styling. And that means that we can animate the characters on a per character basis. So we can change the size of, you know, the R independently to the rest of the text. To do that, head on over to the modifier under the character level styling. All you need to do is select drag. See how it select drags the R? Oop, there we go. And now we can go down and we can actually increase the size of it and see how it affects it. We're gonna head on over to the transform controls, highlight the R, and we're just going to increase the size on the Y axis. So we're just gonna make it a little bit longer. And you can see here that more or less, it's it's a bit longer, a little bit bigger. So we're gonna make it a little bit longer there. So maybe just a 1.5 on the Y. So the vertical axis and then on the horizontal axis, 
Let's make it 1.2. I think 1.2 looks good. And then we can just change the sort of the location of it. So we'll just move it down on the Y just a little bit. Maybe 0.08 there looks good. And a little bit on the X, just a little bit, just to, so maybe negative 0.01. Just keep our numbers nice and simple. And we're gonna do the exact same numbers for the S. So one point, so highlight the S, 1.5 on the Y, 1.2 on the X, and then we're going to change this to 0.08, which is what we had it to before, and this one to negative 0.01. Just bring it in a little bit, looking pretty good. Actually, this one could probably come down just a little bit. Maybe 0.09 works for that one. We're gonna just quickly do that to the R as well. We more or less want it in line with the top line. And there you go. So. As you can see, we're sort of getting somewhere. Next, we need to edit the materials on the text. So with the text selected, go back to the tools, not in the modifier. We're gonna go over to the shading tab and we need to do a few things. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop that down so we have a bit more access. So the first thing we're gonna do is with shading element one, we're going to change it to text outline. Straight away, this is looking a lot more like the logo. And we're going to actually do a texture and so we're gonna go down here and we're gonna to go to type, image, image source. We're gonna to change to clip and this just allows us to browse to a file on our hard drive. So all I've done is in Google, just go to pexels.com, a great free stock image resource and type in grunge. So grunge is like a texture and I've taken this image here. Um, you can use anything. Where we, doesn't need to be super detailed just because of the resolutions we're working in, but you know, grab a grungy clip and then browse to it on your hard drive. So I'm just gonna browse Stranger Things and here we go. And now if I zoom in, so I'm gonna zoom in on my text and we're gonna have a look at the effect here. So you can see we've got the sort of grunge going there and you know, it looks pretty good. Before we do anything else, we're going to create the red outline because that will help us sort of isolate how the grunge material needs to look. So to do that, under the shading elements, we're going to go from one to shading element two because you can use multiple elements to create your effect. All we need to do is enable it and then make sure we're on outline again and we're going to leave it pretty much as is, like red outline is the default. However, we just need to increase the thickness a little bit because we can barely see it. So we're gonna increase the thickness. We're gonna go not super thick. I'm just gonna zoom out, make sure we're not kind of going over things too much. All right, I think that's looking good. We're just going to change it's hard lines, but it's not too hard. So we've got different options here. So we've got a really soft one, kind of got like a different, and then we've got this one here. So we're gonna go with this one, hard line. And um, I reckon so far that's looking pretty good. What we will do is right down the bottom, we're gonna go to softness and we're gonna increase the softness only a little bit. And that's just because when you actually watch if we go back and we watch this a little bit, you can see here that it is soft and that's just because obviously the show's set in the 80s, so they're trying to emulate sort of like the film stocks of that time where things weren't 4K resolution. So we're gonna do that ourselves and we're just going to increase the softness. Not a lot, to be honest, maybe just 0.5, I think. Just a little bit, because we want it to be soft when we're nice and zoomed in. However, if we zoom out, the title still looks nice and crisp. It's just for these close-ups where it's going to look soft. So looking good so far, now let's head back and start fixing up this interior portion here. So to do that, scroll up the top in your inspector, go to element, shading element one, and now we can start affecting the sort of thickness of this one. So we wanna bring the thickness down a little bit. We don't need it super thick. And we're also going to change the joint style to the same one as before. You can play around to be honest, but keeping it same, same makes sense. We're gonna bring the opacity down as well, because we don't really, we basically, we wanna be able to see this effect from close up, but not from up here. So right now, obviously we can still see it. So we just need to play around a little bit, maybe change the opacity a bit more. I think thickness is probably not too bad, but like, like let's drop the opacity. Like right down is probably around there is not too bad. So if I zoom out from there, 
you can't really tell. What we can do actually though is go back and change the thickness of the red outline. So we're gonna go back to two. Just going to bring that in a little bit. Not much, just a bit. Yeah, I think that's much better. All right, go back. And this is, you know, creating titles is a bit like this, okay? Going back and forth. We're gonna bring the thickness of this one in a bit. Now we're going to go down and we're actually gonna increase the softness of this one just so it blends a little bit better. Not a lot. Again, 0.5 is probably enough. And this is just so that if you are nice and close, you know, it doesn't look like it's a nice hard line. It kind of blends in. And we're also gonna add a bit of a glow to it. Now, the reason I do this is because when you're up close, you can kind of see, if you go to the start, you can see we've got this kind of texture here and that's sort of what we're trying to replicate in this sort of thing is this like fake texture. It's very subtle and that's why we're trying to do that here. So turning up the glow a bit and then lowering the opacity and just kind of going back and forth between the two. Again, we're, we're only trying to create this illusion of texture in the text. So if we zoom out, you know, you can't see it, but if we're in, you can see it. And that's what we are trying to achieve here. So I reckon we're gonna go 0.5 on the glow. And I think maybe we're gonna go 0.15 on the opacity. And we're going to leave it as such for this one here. So we're gonna close, bring that up nice and tight. All right, so looking pretty good so far. The next thing we're gonna do is add the flicker. So if we go back and we play the start of this sequence, you can see that the glow is flickering. Okay, it has this kind of pulsating effect and that's the next thing that we're going to achieve. So with the text node selected, shift space to bring up a tool selector, type in glow, and you can add either this one or that one. It does the exact same thing to be honest. So we're gonna add this one. Now you can see we have our glow effect and if we turn it on and off, Looking pretty good so far, but for this one, for the first pass of the glow, we're going to drop the intensity down until we find something we like. So we don't want it too intense. So I reckon for this one, 0.6 is gonna be good. And we're just doing this at the moment just to see how it looks. So we don't wanna really notice it from up here, but we wanna be able to notice it nice and close. So if I turn this on and off, there's definitely a glow there. So what we're gonna do is, right click on the glow parameter and we're gonna go modify with and down right to the shake command. And this is going to keyframe it and add a modify. So we're gonna go over to the modify menu. And now if I play this back, if you notice there is a, there you go. There's a nice pulsating effect, but right now it's a bit too, bit too intense. And that's just because right now the minimum is zero and the maximum is like one, so fully on. So it's going from fully off to fully on and it's going between the two. What we wanna do is go to that, go to the value that we decided looked good, which was 0.6. So we're gonna go the maximum is 0.6. All right, so that's the most glow it's gonna to go to. But we also wanna reduce the minimum because we don't wanna have such a large variance between the values. We just want a very slight pulsating effect. So I think 0.2, Maybe 0.2, you can see that that's there, it was there. We're gonna increase the random seed, so it's just gonna randomize it a bit more rather than just being a very linear effect. And you can see here, it is going on and off. We might actually boost the random. And just playing around with this is the most important part of this. So I think so far that's pretty good. We have this pulsating effect, kind of goes on and off. It's not too bad, maybe lower the smoothness a bit so it's a little bit harsher. Doesn't blend as much, there we go. Now, yeah, that's looking good there. All right, fantastic. So we're gonna go with 0.6 on the maximum. We'll go with 0.3 on the minimum. So we're only going between those two variables. Bring the smoothness down a bit so it's a little bit harsher, of a, it's a bit more of a jittery glow. And random seed, wherever you feel that that's comfortable, that's just randomizing how it goes in and out. Next, we need to just control the glow size. So if we go right up, you can see that it increases the size of the glow. And if we lower it right down, brings it in a bit tighter. I think, to be honest, the base value of 10 works for this effect. Again, you don't really notice the pulsating from back here. It's only 
when you're in nice and close. And it's a very subtle effect, but that's what we want. We want it to be nice and subtle. We don't want to be able to see it from the fine, you know, from up here. We only want to see it when we're zoomed in close. Now we want to do what I like to call like our final glow pass, because if we do look at the title over here, it does have a glow to it, okay? So we're going to, with the glow node selected, shift space again, bring up our tool selector, and literally just gonna add the glow from the start and maybe just lower the intensity just a little bit, not a lot, and probably leave it at that. So if we turn this on and off, it's giving it a bit of a glow, nothing too intense, but if we play that, we still get our nice pulsating effect. All right, now it's up to the tricky part, which is animating this effect. So to do that, after this glow to node, we're gonna go shift space and add a transform node. That just allows us so that we can control everything above it. We can move it around nice and easily. And we're gonna to need to do that because we really do have to animate this. There's a lot of animating. So when we watch this title sequence, you can see that it's very similar to Star Wars in the sense that the title comes in from behind the camera. So we're gonna start at frame zero with the transform node selected. And we're just gonna really just, we're gonna boost the size right up. And we're gonna notice that when you get to five, it actually stops. So we're gonna have to go past five. You type in a number. So maybe let's go with 60. We're gonna start there and we're gonna set a keyframe on size and center. So those are the, so the center refers to the translation. So the position of where it's located, size is obviously the size. And then we're gonna go forward. This is a lot of trial and error, but we're gonna go forward to say frame 80, which is roughly two, three, four, five seconds-ish. Actually, if we just go to frame 100, that's gonna be four seconds. And we're going to bring the size down a bit. We're gonna go down to maybe there, all right? Because we notice if we play, you know, we're just trying to imitate as it comes in, it comes in a little bit, we see a bit of an A, and then it switches, okay? So that's sort of what we're after here is we want it to come in and we want to see a little bit of a letter. So it could probably even come in a little bit more, something like that. And then it's automatically set a keyframe. So if we play this back, you see we've got our pulsating effect and we just go back, make sure it's playing at full speed. Cool, all right. Now that we're at that one, this is where the animating gets a little bit fiddly. We need to use our arrow key to go to the next frame. One more frame, we're gonna set a keyframe. So manually set a keyframe for the center and the size, then go forward one more frame. We're going to return the size. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. And we're going to go to the top of this N here. Doesn't matter where you actually go to, to be honest, all right? you can sort of pick the letter that you want to go to. But we're going to start with the N. And so now if we go back, we have our animation and then it jumps to the N, which is exactly how it works in the show. So now we can go forward a few more frames. So let's go forward another, let's say another full four seconds. And we're just going to, on the X axis only, going to move forward only a little bit. We don't need it to go forward a whole lot. And so now if we play this back, now it does that. So it goes from there, jumps, goes straight to the end, like so. We're now we're gonna do another jump. So we're gonna go forward one keyframe, set a keyframe for size and center, go forward again. We're going to change the size again. And now we're going to, pick maybe let's go with the H doesn't matter it's this is all just up to you and then we're going to go forward same amount another four seconds and we're going to animate that again now the less animating in this the better in terms of like distance okay so I'm looking at how far I've gone here trying to copy that over here because it's a pretty slow title animation so if we go back here even that, you know, could be a little bit too fast. If we go, mm, maybe. And I'm just going, making sure I'm on the right keyframe and I'm just adjusting it back a little bit. And that's gonna make it a little bit 
slower. So the next part of this animation is where it's going to come together at the very end. So at this point here. Now we're not going to do these vertical letters. We probably could if we wanted to spend a lot more time on it. But this is the bit that we're animating now. So we're going to, again, go forward one frame, set a keyframe, go forward another frame, and then we're going to recenter it. So which is 0.5. You'll notice that 0.5 is dead center. And we can probably change the size as well because we, again, we don't want this, we want it to animate slow. So we don't want to start it massively huge. So we're going to probably start it at say seven and we're going to go forward to frame 400. So another four seconds and we're going to reset it right to the start just by clicking. So we go forward just by clicking that dot there, it resets it. So if we go through here, it skips and then it plays and it goes down like so. So it is a little bit quick. We could probably maybe on this frame start the sizing a bit smaller so that the transition isn't as intense. So next we're going to animate the sort of spacing of the text. So if we go back to our text node under the first thing, we're animating the tracking here. Okay. So we can spit and this is going to be the section where the letters sort of come together. Together. So what we're going to do is at frame where the text starts, so at frame, I think 302, we're going to set a keyframe just before it for the tracking, leave it at one, we're going to jump forward and we're going to have the tracking shift a little bit like so. So as the text comes in, it's coming in spaced out and then at frame 400, we're just going to reset the tracking so that it's back to normal. So basically as it's zooming in, the text is coming in together, but what we can actually do to change this so that it doesn't look like it's all just sort of shrinking is actually back here. We find our value. So we've gone through and we've set it at one point, let's say 1.2. So it starts there. We're actually going to change that value and have it so that it's actually at 1.2 at this point in time as well, so that it stays at that sort of spaced out point. And then at the very end, the letters start to shrink together. So we go, so there you go. So the letters and then they start to shrink together and we can even maybe uncheck that and have it so that at 420 it resets. So there's a little bit of a timing difference in the sense that the text comes in and then once the text's in its spot and at the right scale, the letters still continue to shrink in after the fact. And that just helps sort of sell the effect once this is buffered through. We'll just play that to make sure. Yeah, I think that doesn't look too bad. We're going to smooth out this animation in the spline editor right at the very end. So that's okay. So now we need to create our lines, right? So the, if we have a look at the very end of this, we'll keep going forward a little bit. We've got our lines here and here. Pretty easy. It's just going to be, again, we're going to create a background. I'm going to create, make it red. And we're going to, with it selected, create a rectangle. We're going to move it up change the size of it. And we're doing this on frame 420 because this is when it appears. So we're going to change the width to be as long as the text is and change the height so that it's nice and small. I'm going to bring it down where it needs to go. And then we need to change how it actually looks. So now we can't see it because that's currently not being played in a viewer. So what we're going to do is grab the output of the background, connect it to the merge. It's going to create another merge node. All right, so that we have just a blank sort of rectangle and we're just going to increase the border width just a little bit so that we have our rectangle and we're just going to play around with how the positioning and where it looks. So I think this needs to be a little bit thinner. So just with the height, we're going to bring the height in just a smidgen more. Looks pretty good there. And maybe the border width as well. Just bring that in just a little bit. 0.0. Five, eight. Let's make really minute adjustments. So there we have our line looking good. And 
All we need to do is add our glow to it, which is pretty simple because all I'm going to do is uh, copy this glow node here. And then with the background selected, just hit paste. There you go, nice and simple, like so. So we just need to do this two more times. So we need to, again, create another background, change it to red, gonna connect it to the merge to output. It's gonna create another merge node and we're going to create a rectangle. The best part about this one is that this one we can actually sort of just copy and paste. So we're going to change the width of this one. So we're going to change the width down to something like that, change the height down to something quite small, we're going to position it where we think we need to have it positioned. So somewhere around there, Change, keep changing the parameters until we have something usable. And again, we need it to kind of line up. If you really want to, you can measure it. We're just sort of eyeballing it today. We're gonna to increase the border width again. So 0.06, I think we had it at 0.058, depends how specific you want it to be. And looking pretty good. Now, one thing I did mention is we just need to go back to the rectangle over here and we need to soften it out. So we're just gonna create a quick soft edge, not much, 0.8 maybe 0.001, just a very slight, again, to create that same effect that we were doing with the text. Gonna do that here with the rectangle, create a quick soft edge, 0.01, nice, very subtle. Gonna paste the glow node again, so we have the same glow effect. Now we have that, we can just copy and paste that. So what we're gonna do is we're going to just copy those, and we're going to just paste them up the top here. Nice and easy, except that it's backwards. So let's just, and then drag it into the merge three. So that's all merged together and we just need to reposition it. So we're gonna grab rectangle one and we're just gonna go right over to the other side like so. And now we have more or less our finished logo. We just got to animate these bars but looking pretty good so far. And to animate those bars, you guessed it, we just need to create a mask. So it's pretty simple. We're going to put the mask into the merge node that is connected to those things. So for this rectangle, for the top bar, we're gonna put a mask into the merge two and that'll affect everything above it, etc. for the merge four and three. So with the merge two node, we're gonna hit control shift space type in rectangle, it's gonna create our mask. As you can see, already doing what we need it to do. We're going to move it up. We're going to soften the edge a little bit, like so. And then we're going to drop the height down, doesn't need to be as high as it is. And we're going to bring the width right down to zero. So you can't see it anymore. And we're gonna set a keyframe at 420, which is when everything connects. Then we're going to move forward to 440, so a full Second, bring the border, bring the width right up till it encompasses it. And so now we have a nice title, boom, covers the whole thing, looks good. Now the way this works is the bottom ones, they spread out once the top one is finished. So we're gonna quickly create a another rectangle node. So we're gonna shift, space, hit rectangle, we're going to, so at 440, we're gonna keyframe the width, go forward 20 seconds and expand it. So now that that one appears as well, we're also going to soften the edge. So if we go forward and we just increase the softness of the edge a little bit. And quite simply, because this needs to be, these two need to animate at the same time, we can just copy that, merge four, paste. And now we have the effect mirrored on the other side, nice and easy. And all we really need to do now is two things. One is smooth out some of these animations because they can be a little bit harsh and add our film grain over the top to give it that retro 80s vibe. So first off, let's smooth out the animation. So let's open the spline editor up. I'm gonna drag this up because we don't really need to see too much. and. What we need to animate is the character spacing. So we're gonna check that one. And then with the character spacing checked, we're going to hit this button here, zoom to fit. 
So this is how the character spacing is currently animated. There's no animation at all. And then we've got this quick animation here. So we need to highlight those last two there and smooth those out like so. And let's grab these handles here and just sort of like extend the way that this kind of give it a nice smooth ramp like so. Yeah, I reckon that'll do. So that's going to fix the way that the characters kind of when they come together. It's going to hopefully buffer. It's going to make it look a lot smoother. So see how they come together. They sort of slow together. Just looks a little bit nicer. So now that that's done, we can get rid of that. We don't need to see that. Next thing we need to animate are the rectangles. So rectangle four. There we go. And we're going to zoom to fit. And this is pretty easy because all we're going to do is highlight all those and smooth them all out. And that is pretty much it. Nice and easy. And that's just going to, if we close that down, that's just going to smooth out the animations for these rectangles at the end here. Makes it look a little bit smoother. One last thing, and we will have finished this Stranger Things effect, is with the last merge node selected, shift space, I'm gonna type in grain, and we're gonna put film grain right at the end here. And the easiest way to see how this is going to affect is we wanna pretty much go to the zoomed in version, right? So this part here, cause we wanna have a look at how the grain is affecting everything. So we're going to go to one of our keyframes at the start here and we're just going to play around with the settings in the film grain. We can obviously play through. So right now the film grain is pretty intense. Here, this is a good point. This is a good one to sort of play with. So we could reduce the complexity of the film grain. That's just going to make it render faster. Going up is gonna make it render slower. Probably eight is probably not too bad. The size, if we go really small, it's gonna be very smooth. If we go very high, it's gonna be very rough. I feel like we want a bit of a smoother grain for this one. We can obviously turn the strength up, turn the strength down, but I think just a little bit stronger than normal. We can obviously make it really rough, really smooth, a little bit rougher, and something like that. If we play through, it's gonna be really slow, but I think something like that. And again, right at the end here, you can't really see it. You maybe sort of can. We could probably actually fiddle around with it a bit more. Let's maybe smooth it out a bit. Maybe make the strength a little bit lower. Let's have a look, see how that affects it at the start. Yeah, I think that looks pretty... It's hard. It looks, sometimes it looks better zoomed in, but I think, I think it looks pretty good there. And what we could do is maybe change the color of the background. So I know it's black, but we could probably change it to be a bit of a red tinted black. It's just going to help sell the effect, make it look like the color's spilling out onto it. So I'm just changing the color just a little bit. We don't want it to be super intense. So, you know, the darker, the better, but a little bit red's not gonna hurt too much. And there you go, guys. We have created the effect. So if we go to the edit page, drop in the media pool. Here's one I created earlier. Let's delete that, delete that. Let's bring this clip down and I'm going to quickly just make sure that it's going to render and it's going to render in the timeline here we have created our Stranger Things title inside of Fusion in DaVinci Resolve I really hope you guys found this tutorial fun and helpful and you know, we did a lot of different things inside of Fusion. So hopefully you can sort of take that and start experimenting in your own time because that's sort of how I created this and that's how we make great things is just by experimenting in our own time about things that make us interested, I guess. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash the thumbs up button guys and subscribe for more videos. I feel like we've covered so much of the basics now in DaVinci Resolve that starting to, we're starting to get into the juicy stuff, the stuff that I like playing around with. So make sure you subscribe to stick around for that. Till the next video guys, see ya.